Hello, friends from iWire Pastor Ken Harley in Hong Kong. How are you doing today? Uh, it is Saturday about 9 o'clock Hong Kong time. That means about 9 a.m. Uh, Detroit, New York, Eastern Standard Time in America. 8 a.m. in Kansas City, Chicago, Milwaukee. Uh, 7 a.m. in Colorado, that New Mexico. 6 a.m. in L.A., San Francisco, California, Seattle. And I don't want to keep on doing the time zones. Okay, um, we're going to talk in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 today, verses 12 through 28. Uh, I just received um, a message from uh, Graham Cook on Times of Refreshing from a few years ago. And he uses... Uh, verses 16 to 18 in 1 Thessalonians talking about joy and prayer. And uh, I'm looking for that too. We're all looking for it. And what he was talking about is that if you really start understanding how Jesus sees you, what the Father's plan is, what the Father is like, what they're doing in releasing the Holy Spirit to teach us all things and do the work of the kingdom here in uh, this earth, when we really understand it, our joy begins to increase, no matter what we're going through, because it's like we have the hand of Jesus, the hand of God right on our back, and no matter what happens, we're going to be okay. No matter what happens, we're taken care of. So uh, this week is a fail week in my mind. Let me explain. Uh, last week, for some reason, I've been feeling like I need to exercise and maybe choose better foods, maybe even lose a little weight. So... I weighed about 258 pounds, I don't know what the kilograms are, but 258 pounds on Tuesday, and I was exercising, I was walking from school home in the heat, um, I feel like I needed to prepare my body for some challenge, and uh, the Lord's really been f showing a lot of favor in my life, because up until a couple of weeks ago, I would eat anything I wanted, I would eat buffet, I would eat lots of meat and lots of potatoes and lots of rice and uh, lots of pasta and four candy bars or six candy bars every day. Now I've been drinking tea, iced tea, and I ran out of uh, Lipton, Nest tea or iced tea. Um, no sugar, no NutraSweet, just the plain stuff. And I ran out, so if anybody wants to send me some, I'd really be grateful for that. But I, a friend brought some iced tea with some NutraSweet, and I hate to be drinking that, but it actually helps me out a little bit because it's sweet. Uh, a lot of times when I go on these radical diets trying to lose weight, I'll eat vegetables and garlic, um, and I get too salty, and then I hit a wall, and then I give up. So um, my friend David from Ireland, he came to visit me this week, so we went out for a real big dinner at Pizza Hut, and I kept eating and eating. And then I went home and I ate some more. And then on, uh, th I didn't exercise on Wednesday night. And then on Thursday, I, uh, what did I do? I ate some more. Friday, I went to a curry buffet, and I ate a lot of, the best thing was mutton and curry carrots, actually. And I bought some carrots, but unfortunately it won't be as good as the curry carrots. Um, so I got on, last night I was all depressed and I was like, oh, I've blown it again, but I'll try on Saturday to exercise. I probably gained a million pounds because you don't understand. When I eat, I eat, okay? But the Lord has shown favor the last few months in my life where no matter what I eat, I'm not gaining weight, you know? I'm actually starting to get closer to being lighter than I have ever been before. Now, 258 pounds is only three or four pounds away from lighter than I've been um, on a regular basis since I was 21, 22 years old. There was a, a time when I hit 244, but that was a time when I just was overdoing it, uh, exercising a lot in California, and eating just lettuce. And I got down there, but I couldn't maintain it. So pray for me, because I felt like the Lord said, prepare, prepare, prepare. There's preparation time. 
And it could be that when I'm sorting through all the books the next few weeks with the container shipment of books, yes, our container shipment will be here very soon. So if you're a church in Hong Kong or mainland China and you get here this message, uh, contact me and I can give you free Bibles, many Christian books, and other materials, okay? So, um, anyway, uh, maybe the Lord is uh, trying to get me ready for different things. Preparation, preparation, preparation. But the sad thing is, is after Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I feel like I failed. Our kids at school, they'll have a big L and they'll say, I fail. And I try to tell them, no, you don't fail, that you learn from mistakes and you keep going and you keep being energetic. Matter of fact, Graham Cook, when he was talking just a few minutes ago and I was listening to a clip from his message, he was saying, Jesus, the Father's plan through the Holy Spirit is coming to bring us closer to how God reacts in every situation, how God takes care of things, okay? So Graham Cook, he said, uh, if you're having a bad day, all of a sudden the Lord will still keep building the joy in your life. He'll keep building the joy in your life. Receive that prophetic message right now for you. Jesus is building the joy in your life, no matter what happens, okay? Recently, somebody came up to me and told me a lie. They said, uh, you did this, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't. I said, no, that's wrong. Not at all. But that didn't bother me. I told them, and I didn't call the church, or I didn't, you know, shut them down or rebuke them or anything. I just said, no, that's wrong. Don't say it, you know, because the joy of Jesus Christ in me, you know, says we are free and that that sister is just as valuable in God's eyes as me and I need to encourage her and lift her up and say, keep going, keep going. Jesus is proud of you. You know, I don't need to shut her down. I don't need to destroy a ministry. I need to bless people. I need to encourage them. I need to lift them up. It's the devil. It's the enemy that wants to tear people down. It's the enemy that wants to separate people. It, Jesus says, let's come together. Convergence was the message that I had for 2011. And three times this year, I've tried to bring groups of people together and I have failed. I have failed. It hasn't worked. And it, of course it hurts. But the problem is, is that we don't need to see the short-term shortcomings. We need to see the long-term longcomings. Jesus Christ is going to, Jude 24, present us before the Father with exceedingly great joy. He's going to present you before the Father with exceedingly great joy. And we do not have to worry. We do not have to stress. We just need to have joy. Now let me tell you my miracle. Even though yesterday during lunch I was piling on, eating so much beef and so much mutton. Now it is true, the Lord has shown me when I go to buffets that something that will work good for me and I might eat a couple of helpings and enjoy it, but not, I don't have to eat everything, only what really works for me. And sometimes Indian food makes me a little sick because the spices, are, my body's not used to it. But the mutton and the carrots was so good. And then I had a little strawberry custard. And it was so good because it helped to put out the fire. And the Lord blessed my stomach. But last night when I woke up, I was so bad. I called McDonald's and I had two cheeseburgers and I had two french fries. And I had two strawberry milkshakes. And I was like, oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm, I failed. I'm a loser. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, but tomorrow, Saturday morning, I'll try to get up and I'll try to exercise because this is not about losing weight. The Lord is trying to get my body moving. Less time sitting and whining and more time, I'm going to live in the joy. You know, when I'm exercising, um, the Lord has given me a lot of favor. My body's feeling a little better. I'm not so stiff. I can move. I can move my legs. I don't know if you can see it. I can move my legs. I can move! Jesus says, get off your bed. Take up your bed and walk. 
That's what I need to do. I need to do it more and more. Why? Nothing is important to me anymore except that Jesus helps people and that I can love Jesus and know He loves me. I mean, if I had extra money and all of that, sure it would be great to have an iPad. Sure it would be great to have a better computer. Sure would it be great to have a bigger phone. Maybe not, I like a small phone, but it's nice to have a phone with a camera because then I can take lots of pictures and post them on Facebook and share with people all the different people we're ministering to in Hong Kong and Central and all over Hong Kong. But uh, sure it would be nice. I would probably spend the money instead on buying a new little piano so that we can do more ministry because our, our, after three years the piano is starting to go not so good. You know, I would probably uh, increase our time in the coffee bars reaching out to more and more people. I would probably um, print a book write a book and print a book and print more Jesus in Hong Kong CDs. And we're working on the Chinese CD uh, and I would have the money to pay uh, my friend who's producing it money so that he could take care of his children and build a college fund for, for them. You know, uh, the biggest dream in my life is for my mother and father to come here to Hong Kong and live with me and I can take care of them because so many people here in Hong Kong and around Asia would love, would love, would love to be encouraged by them and, and receive their prayers and get in, insight on how to build businesses and how to build good families and good life and how to overcome challenges and have joy. Okay, so uh, you were, now we're going to have a little action, just not me doing a talking head thing. Okay, I felt like from the Lord, or maybe I was wrong, that I need to make a garlic broth. So what I did is I cut up like seven, eight, nine garlic cloves, and I just boiled them in water. Now I've been letting it cool. Let me show you. There's my Jesus paintings. There's a painting that inspired me. I still don't understand it. Here's another Jesus painting. Okay, here we're going in to my kitchen. And I'm very thankful I have somebody help me keep it clean. Here's my garlic broth. Woo! Woo! Now you're going to watch me as I pour it into the bowl. I'm going to pour it into the bowl. Oh, we're having a little preaching cooking. Here's my little bowl, plastic bowls. I got them cheap and they work pretty good. Hong Ya. I don't know if you can see it. Hong Ya bowl. Okay. And here we go. Doo Some cooking. Okay. Pour it in. Okay, I've got to get all the garlic in. Okay. I'll, I'll just make it easy. I'll grab this garlic. As you can see, it's cooler because I spent a half hour, hour letting it cool off. Oops. Okay, I'm trying to lick my fingers and eat pieces of garlic. Okay, I don't know if you're going to see this. It's kind of like water. It got cold fast. Okay, I'll drink some more later after I preach. Hmm. When I lived in Korea, we used to eat a lot of garlic. I had no idea. It was probably because the pig intestines weren't so good. Yes, yeah, sorry for my laundry hanging. Doing a little wash. It's a cost savings measure, but also uh, on uh, Monday morning, and I got some other laundry that uh, my little helper friend can help me uh, hang up and iron and stuff like that. I thank Jesus for Aurelia. Some of you know her. She was healed, and she's still praising the Lord. Okay, let's go to the Word. This scripture, actually I'm reading because I, Graham Cook was talking on it, and I went and looked it up, and I said, this is a good one. I felt like the Lord said, Ken, you need to make a message and send it out to everyone tonight. This has nothing to do with any situation that's going on in my life. 
It's just the word that came, okay? Dear brothers and sisters, we're in verse 12, 1 Thessalonians 5. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. Okay, verse 12. One, one thing that I really like about John Paul Jackson's Art of Hearing God that we've been studying is that they use this scripture and other scriptures that encourage people that Jesus Christ himself, according to the Father's plan, uh, sends the Holy Spirit to raise up leaders, and some of the leaders, whether we like them or not, they are God's leaders. Obama is the President of the United States, and my job is to pray with him and work with him to make the country better, to lift up God throughout the country as best as we can and make the country better. There are so many leaders who have been kind to me in Hong Kong, and I bless them in Jesus' name. I bless them. Um, I just got a message from a friend who's getting an operation and I love that, that man very much and let's pray for him right now Lord Jesus I pray for my friend that's getting an operation encourage him encourage him come through for him Lord he's a man of heaven already on earth he's been a great encouragement to me many people here in Hong Kong and we love him. We love him. Let his healing come to place. Lord, let the heavenlies receive him in due time. And Lord, just let everyone around him be, receive the joy from his life. When I think of him, I smile because he's such a lover. He's such a lover of you, God. I wish I could be more like him. I wish I could be a lover of God and a lover of the people. I wish I could be better. I wish I didn't have to always think that I fail and am a big loser. Because, Lord, when you're around us, when you're around me, when you're around all of us, we are not fails. We are not losers. We are winners. We are overcomers through Jesus Christ, and you will give us the crowns of life. Thank you, Jesus, for this, brother. Okay, dear brothers and sisters, 1 Thessalonians 5. Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. Yesterday I got a call from a brother saying, I see you're associated with somebody that we feel is dangerous in Hong Kong. And we care for you. We don't want to see you hurt by this. And I, I thanked him and I said, how can I give you guys Bibles? How can I help your ministries? I'm here to bless people in Hong Kong and encourage all the churches, all the people, all everyone. At the same time, the person that's uh, been told to me is dangerous. I don't need to give up on her. I need to pray for her. I need to befriend her. I, I need to encourage her, Lord, that she's ministering to so many people. And why do we have to separate and always think that humans are evil? My little kids at YMCA said we are good. At the school, they said we are good. Even the Bible would indicate that. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but blood, but the principalities and the powers, the unseen things. Lord, we rebuke dissension. We rebuke distraction. We rebuke lies of the devil. We rebuke separation in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, you want us all to be together. The word for 2011 was convergence. Let us converge and be together so we can be more effective in reaching out to people. When I, I can tell you stories, when I see people in Mongkok walking by me, they need Jesus. Some of them are good families. Some of them are kids um, on a date. Some of them are wild kids running around, but they need Jesus. So when I'm singing, Yeso Oine, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, it's because my heart is breaking because people need Jesus. Sure, I get incredible enjoyment singing on the street, 
singing in central. But it's not for me. It's so that we can help people to know they are loved by Jesus. That's the only important thing. I mean, sure, there's other things I'd like to do in life. Sure, I'd like to help build an infrastructure in Asia. Sure, I'd like to see hospitals and orphanages built. I'd like to be able to make a difference in the world and make enough money that I could take care of my mother and father and my sister and brother-in-law and help them to have a good life and not suffer. But Jesus has his plans, and, and I, that's all that's important. So how can I encourage you right now? Don't hate your leaders. Don't fight with your leaders. Bless them. If you disagree with them, pray with them. And who do you think you are that you think you know better than your leader? And if you feel that you and your leader are at a different place, instead of going to another church so you can disagree with another leader, there's six, seven million people here in Hong Kong that need Jesus. So just open up your house and invite the people around you and start a prayer group and you become the leader. And then pray for mercy that somebody doesn't try to knock you down. Okay? Verse 14. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. I've been watching a TV show. Oh, I'm watching a TV show. I'm watching a TV show about a woman in the Depression who needed to take care of her daughters. And she had to humble herself and become a, uh, a waitress at a restaurant. And then through learning the restaurant business, uh, she developed her own restaurant and moved up in the world a little bit, and her food was good, and, and she made people happy. Okay? And she gave them good food at a good price. And my relatives, who were around her time period, uh, my grandmother's sisters, they used to uh, sell stuff in a newspaper stand. And they ended up buying three houses very cheap, and that became their family houses and uh, became their future in investments. And they invested in other little things that 40, 50 years later became huge. That's the message that I'm trying to teach people now. We are in a time where if we invest in businesses in Asia now, 40, 50 years from now, your families are going to be well set. And there's going to be plenty of resources for the Church of Jesus Christ to minister to another billion and a half people that will come to the Lord in the next 40 years. That's what's being predicted. And I'm praying for it. I believe it. Jesus wishes that no one perishes, but that all will have eternal life. Do you believe that? Do I believe that? If we really did and knew that people were going to die in 24 hours, we'd be sure, sure be praying for everybody. We'd sure be listening to God and trying to help people around us. Okay, So it says, brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Lazy is a word that means they don't want to do anything. And it's maybe because they're depressed or maybe because they actually want everybody else to take care of them. They're like a con man or something like that. So in another passage, it says, those who don't work, don't eat. So we need to encourage people to work at something. I mean, I've seen beggars in China, a guy with no legs, no arms, and he takes a little cane, and he's on like a big wooden box with wheels, and he wheels himself for miles to get to the temple so he can sit and ask for people to give him stuff. A little squirt of a guy. On my website, you can see his picture. And um, he broke my heart because he's working hard begging. It's not easy to beg. We should never discount beggars. And some of these beggars, like in Mongkok, the same ladies who beg, 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 they're probably made to beg by people in their lives, that there may even be prisoners, captives in, in some gangster underland. And if they don't get money, God knows what happens to them. Beep, 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 beep. Pray for these people. There are so many stories I could tell that would make you cry. Okay, 
14. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. My lady friend who told me some lie, you know, she needs encouragement. She doesn't need to be thrown away from the church. She needs to be loved. She needs me to tell her, no, that's not true. Stop talking and telling people lies. Tell them about God. Tell them about the Bible verses. And hopefully I will remember that too. But we need to be encouraged. Now verse 13 says, Show them great respect, the leaders, and wholehearted love because of their work. I wish, I wish, I wish that I could be friends with several of the leaders of the churches in Hong Kong so that I could show them my love and respect for their hard work, for their care, for the people of God and the people who are lost here in Hong Kong. Live peacefully with each other. We need to get along. We need to care. If people understood that most of the time I spend my life alone in my room, they'd email me and say, hey, just thinking about you, how are you doing? And there are many more people than I who are in the same place. They may have a family, but they feel alone and lost. And we need to encourage them and lift them up. Verse 15. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. I don't want to get to the point as a pastor that I do things that will cause people trouble. It's not about me. It's about people getting closer to Jesus and knowing that Jesus is taking care of them and building them up and raising them up to serve the Lord and to make a difference in the world and to make a difference in their family and to make a difference in their life. I pray that I can be a better person. That I can listen to Jesus and give his joy and uplift everyone. I don't want anybody to suffer because of me. Now back to Graham Cook's joy. When I was a boy, there was a man who would preach and he would sing a song. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and he keeps me and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. 16. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. I'm sitting here. Let me have some more garlic. Woo! I'm sitting here eating this garlic and drinking this broth. It's not very good, but it's something. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I don't know what's going to happen to my body. Maybe I'll go to the bathroom. I had a piece of garlic earlier, and I must confess to you, I vomited. <laughs> it was too strong or something, and I vomited. I don't want to do that. Jesus is showing me that I can't get into, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be loved by everyone. Jesus is showing me that whatever I'm doing, it's because I need to be stronger for what's coming in the future, for what's coming up. I need to be stronger. I need to be stronger. And you know what? I've started praying in tongues. I've started praying and interceding when I'm walking. I've started praying when I'm on the bicycle or on the ski machine. I really like the ski machine. It, it's like up and down where I go up and down and uh, my joints feel better, you know. So I'm praying and interceding and speaking in tongues and whether you agree in that or not, 
It's a way for me to get deeper in God and to pray for people and intercede. You know, and it doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean I'm always happy. But I have this joy that's growing within me in my back. Like God with his hand on my back saying, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. And I know I can do better. I know I can be better. I know I don't uh, do everything I should. But I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to be better. I got to be better. And Jesus says, Rest in me and receive my joy. Receive my joy. For three years that I've been uh, doing Mongkok, every week, every week, there's a joyful miracle of God. The presence and the glory of God comes down into the streets, comes down into the services, comes down into people's life. God shines no matter what distracts. No matter arguments that happen with different people, no matter what happens, Jesus has been shining through me and with me as we bless people and lift them up for three years in Mongkok, and before that in Tungcheng, and before that in Chimcha Choi, and before that in China, and before that in Korea, and even though I didn't know it, before that in America. Jesus has been with me for years because for some reason he loves me. For some reason he cares for me. And all that matters to me anymore is that I can care for others, that I can help people and encourage them. The students at my school, sometimes I get a good chance to lift them up and encourage them to believe in themselves, to push harder, to say you can do it, fight harder, push harder, push harder. Now, if people would come and say, Ken, you need healing. Ken, you need to wait on the Lord. Ken, you need to receive His glory and you need to fast. But Jesus has chosen a fast that is different for me to care for the orphans and the widows. And I pray that I can get higher in Jesus. I pray you can let Jesus give you a vision that you can let Jesus encourage you and lift you up to the Father with great glory, Jude 24. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19, Do not stifle or do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Okay, listen to Ken. Ken could be totally off. Listen to anybody else. We can all be totally off. You test the spirit and you test the, what we prophesy with the scripture. You know, the Lord showed me many, many years ago, if people aren't into prophecies, they're into Bible verses. And if I can get a word and then associate it with a Bible verse and lift people up, they're very happy. They're very happy because the word lifts us up. The word cuts away the fat, cuts away the, even the fat in my life. The word is great. Oh, I know what I did on Thursday. Thursday, I went and paid my phone bill in Xingyi, and then I went to KFC, and I had this big, fat four or five chicken dinner, and I just ate and ate, and I enjoyed myself, and I had this cheese sauce, and I had uh, corn, but the corn wasn't very good there today, on that day. Um, and I was so happy, but I was so like, oh, God. Oh, I'm starting to go down. I'm starting to fail. I'm a loser. I'm going to get be fat all my life. Nobody will love me. Nobody will respect me. Everybody will think I have a demon in me. And here it is Saturday evening. And no matter all that food I ate, I didn't gain any weight. Because Jesus has a plan for me. And he wants me to get over all of those lies. Jesus wants you to get over those lies. Jesus wants you to see yourself beautiful. When you look in the mirror, look in the mirror and say, I am beautiful. I am lovely. Jesus loves me. He will never let me go. No matter what I do, he will be true to me and to all of us. And then he will show us how to help each other, lift up each other, encourage one another. And if you get a prophecy and you, it sounds weird to you and you can't find it in the scripture, something like, oh, you're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. Don't listen. Say, Lord, if this is what you want for me, let me be open to it. And then just put it aside. 
and follow the victory and the, the mission that God has given you already. Okay, verse 23. Now may the God of peace, and I'll give this to you right now, make you holy in every way. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. So when you're thinking about the negative, get rid of it. And receive who you are in Jesus. And if you sin, or you get lost, and you fail, say, Jesus, thank you. You have your hand on my back, and you're going to help me overcome. It's going to be okay. Verse 25 Dear brothers and sisters, pray for us. Pray for me. Pray for our ministry. We need more workers. We need to converge and come together so we can be more effective in Mongkok and Central. Pray for the ladies that they will not give up and be discouraged, but that they will go to the ladies in the cardboard church and they will talk to them and pray for them, encourage them, and bring them to Jesus Christ. Pray for me that I will have the wisdom to do everything I need to do, but to keep growing closer to Jesus and not wear out, not burn out. I thank God every day I go to church. Tomorrow I will go to church and I will go probably with a little dread. It's Sunday, a long day and a lot to do. But instead I should be going with celebration and joy because every Sunday there's a surprise and everyone is very happy. And the best surprise is Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, according to the Father's plan, sends his kingdom to us. And we get deeper with God and filled with his life. I pray for that tomorrow. Please, Lord Jesus, thank you for coming tomorrow and being with us. Help us to make a difference and reach somebody who's on a destiny for hell or who's in a destiny to kill themselves because they are so hurting so bad. Let change happen. Okay, verse 26. Greet all brothers and sisters with Christian love. I command you in the name of the Lord to read this letter to all brothers and sisters. You guys, you don't have to go to church to listen to the pastor. You can read this letter, First Thessalonians, to everyone around you and give them the hope and the good news of Jesus. We are not stupid. Jesus didn't make us stupid. So you guys go out and start sharing the word all around you. You can do it. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Take the blind and pray for them and watch their eyes open. Those who are lost, those who have mental illnesses, those who are crippled, those who have uh, prison sentences, those who are drug addicted, lay hands and watch God do the miracles. You can do it. I can give you the authority right now. But Jesus already gives you the authority. You don't need a man giving you authority. You don't need a man teaching you the Bible college. You need to just follow the scripture and go and give life. And then teach, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, but he'll also bring churches and people in your life that can maybe give you a little better materials, a little more clearly, so we can do better. Remember Paul met Apollos, and they taught him? so he could do the job better through Jesus and gave him the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Verse 28. Bless, encourage people. Let them have a great Sunday, a great weekend. Let them know you love them and they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye from Hong Kong.